with me is Bishop Grace Dalizu. She's uh, a senior, the senior pastor at Jesus Leaves Church Ministries. She's been with us before, and uh, we're glad to have her again. Karibu sana, Bishop. Great. So we are talking about true joy today. Uh, our topic of discussion is on true joy. And what, what we are focusing on is how to find joy. So we're talking about true joy and, and we're just really basically uh, trying to figure out what is joy, what is the difference between happiness and joy. Uh, they say that happiness is based on material stuff and joy is basically from, from God. You know, the Bible says the kingdom of God is of righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. And so we're just asking, what is your definition? of uh, true joy. Maybe you can start with you, Bishop. Um, thank you, Grace. Uh, true joy uh, mm. is found in the Lord, Jesus Christ. And when we look at the book of Proverbs 17, 22, the Bible says joy is medicine. Joy is yes. medicine uh, to a heart of a man. And um, happiness is what is based on what you see and uh, circumstances that are not permanent. But joy is deeply found in the Lord. And as I've said, Proverbs 17, 22 says that our joy is found in the Lord and is also medicine to our heart. Yes. So what you're saying is happiness is found in circumstances that are not permanent, if I got you right. They are not permanent. Yeah, maybe you have gone for a wedding and you're happy, or the food that mm -hmm. you are eating that time and you're happy. But true mm -hmm. joy is found in the Lord. It doesn't respect circumstances or situations. Irrespective of what you're going through, the joy of mm -hmm. the Lord becomes your strength. Amen. Amen. And my next question would be, uh, sorry we lost Pastor, uh, Father Paul, but we were trying to get him back. Um, so, uh, Bishop, is it possible to find yes, joy yes. in the midst of chaos and turmoil? Because like whatever is happening right now is, is chaos. There's so much happening. People are losing things. We are having scenarios where, you know, people are having to, you know, fend for themselves despite what is happening. Guys are getting out even with the orders to stay home because they're wondering, how am I going to get help if I don't get out? And, and, and you know, people are wondering, so how am I supposed to find joy in this chaos? So is it possible to find true joy at this moment? Uh, it is possible, Grace, and I've said that it doesn't, uh, joy is not dependent on circumstances and situations. It doesn't matter that yes. people are going through, uh, we have this situation of COVID-19, which is, uh, which has become very fearful to many people, and also yes. the uh, financial meltdown globally. Uh, you know, there's no money mm -hmm. anywhere. But this now takes us to the book of Proverbs 3, Five, uh, five and six that says, lean not on your own understanding. Trust exactly. in the Lord. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. there's nothing much we can do. And therefore, our only way is to turn to God to help us through this. Because when you look mm -hmm. at finances, they are not there. When you look at this disease, you are being told it is spreading uh, by contact, when you make contact with other people, and therefore there are no social gatherings. Uh, people you'd want to visit, you can't visit, you can't go for weddings, and therefore we are limited on every side. And therefore for us is to find joy in him, uh, that is Jesus. And also to know that we are not supposed to trust in ourselves or trust in the economy, trust in the government. Because people are saying the government is not doing much. The church is not doing much. You understand? Family members are not yeah. doing much. And therefore, in such a situation, it's good to lean on the Lord, to trust, put our trust in the Lord. And I'm sure he will take us through this time. And we look back and say he has done it for us. Okay. So there's the aspect of not yes. leaning on our own yes. understanding, but, but waiting on the Lord. And, yes. and you know, as you said, the Lord is our strength. Bishop Grace, um, how do you silence that voice? You know, because yes, you you I, you acquire this joy, and then you know for a short time you're leaning on that strength. But their voices, truth is, there are so many times that the enemy will try and speak to you. They, they say the enemy preaches to you. So how do you how do you ensure that you keep that voice from ministering to you? How do you do that, Bishop Grace? Thank you, Grace. Uh, what I would want to say is a very, very uh, difficult time, as uh, Father has said. Uh, and there are so many voices, of course, of uh, despair, 
hopelessness, a lot of negativity all around. Uh, but uh, the Bible tells us in the book of Philippians 4, 6, the Bible tells us in the book of Philippians 4, 6, that be anxious for nothing. Be anxious mm. for nothing. But in every way, pray and petition the heavens with thanksgiving. Because uh, the Bible tells us to thank God in all circumstances. And that we find in the book of 1 Thessalonians 5.18. In all things, give thanks. In all things, give thanks. Therefore, the only way to silence is to be prayerful. We have to pray. Pray because of this uh, pandemic that is in the world over. Also pray because of the financial uh, meltdown globally. You know, there is a financial meltdown. Therefore, that's all that we need to do right now, to silence the voices and also not to dwell on negativity because there's so much negativity, there's so much bad news. Of course, we have to pick the good news that we learn, not good news, the instructions that we need to do. Like, for example, uh, regarding this disease, told, keep your social distance, wear your mask when you're going out, sanitize, that is information. And there's nothing wrong with that. But also at the same mm. time, there's so much negativity. You have to avoid what is uh, bringing you sadness, what is making you anxious. Prayer is one of the things that you have to do. Number two, you have to dwell on things that will create excitement in you. Probably read a good book. Uh, another thing, you can do some exercises to ensure that you bring good energy into you because such a time is a very critical time when it comes to your own health and uh, health of your mind you know because the worries will be there the voices will be there negativity will be there and we can't dwell on that alone the whole day and the whole mm -hmm. night we have to ensure we are distracted yeah. so that we move to other things yes I like, I like what you brought out, uh, Bishop, the aspect of negativity, because I think, like you said, there's so much that's going on at this point um, around that. There's yes. information across, you know, the whole world. Every angle, there's information. There's YouTube uh, guys are, you know, streaming and seeing what is happening. There's news, there's press conferences, there's negativity. Social media is also, you know, big on this. There's what is uh, being perpetrated, yes. I mean, or rather bring, being brought out and... Um, on social media but now the place of fellowship and finally Thank bishop you. grace as we wind up uh what is your last word yeah. to your congregation now you're not able to hold the meetings as you used to there's no church gathering anymore but you have the social media platforms where you're preaching to them maybe face through messages and calls um how, what would mm. you say to them and then finally maybe you can pray for us um what i would want to say is that they should hold fast on to what they believed. You know, such times are very interesting and they're also good because they test mm -hmm. our strength. They test our strength. Mm -hmm. And what I would tell uh, members of my church and also other believers out there, that this is the time to practice our faith like never before, because that is our mm -hmm. international currency. That is our currency day in and out, because without faith, you know, it's impossible to please God. And faith is believing mm. those things that are not as if they are. So what I would want to say to them is that this is the time to hold on to their faith. This is the time to hold on to the word of God, because that is the only foundation that we have. Because a church yes. can be removed. People can stop gathering. But your faith should not move away from you, or you should not move away mm. from your faith. Probably, Grace, I should pray. Yes. Please. Father, we want to thank you. We want to worship you and we want to glorify you even for such a time. Mm -hmm. That we should give you thanks in all situations and in all circumstances. And Lord, we are careful to thank you even in these times that there is so much uncertainty, even in this time that we don't understand so much, but we lean not on our own understanding, but we lean on you, Jehovah. Because you know the way and you'll make a way for us. We know we shall overcome all these challenges that have come our way because you have created us to be victors 
in every circumstance mm -hmm. and in every situation. We thank you because, my Father, we do not fear. We are not fearful because you have not given us a spirit of fear, but of love, mm -hmm. of power, and of a sound mind. That we reach out to others, even in this time, to know how they are doing. And even with our own substance, that will bless others mm -hmm. that do not have. We'll care of those. We'll care for those who do not have and they are in need, oh God. Help us to love one another. Help us to depend on you. Help us to look unto you as the author and the finisher of our faith. For it is in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed and believed. Amen. Amen. Amen and amen. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, we're grateful to yeah, you, you. Uh, Bishop Grace. Grace.